Hello and welcome back as we gather together for our devotion time this week. And as we gather, I will be reading out of the book, The Way Back to Mayberry. And today's title is Robin Hood. And we will be talking about the episode, Opie and His Merry Men. Today's scripture comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Are any of you boys rich? The hobo asks Opie and his friends. The reaction the boys give is a little odd. In fact, none of the four boys have an answer. There are no positive or negative responses. They shrug their shoulders and say they don't know. They don't know if they are rich or not. That was a very small scene in the episode Opie and His Merry Men, but I thought it was interesting. At this point in the series, Opie and his friends seem to be around 12 years old. They have been running around in the woods playing Robin Hood when they come across Willie, a hobo who has set up camp nearby. It seems that Willie is down on his luck because of all the injustice that life has dealt him. He can't work because he has a bad leg from saving the life of a baby who is about to be run over by a train. Willie convinces the boys that it is their duty as disciples of Robin Hood to steal from the rich and give to the poor. And of course, Willie is poor. The boys are happy to oblige Willie by giving him things they take from home. But soon the boys' parents begin to notice the missing items. Opie is a little confused by the whole situation. He asks why some people have everything they need while others have nothing. He just doesn't think it's fair that some people have to struggle just to make ends meet. When Andy finds out what the boys are doing, he reminds them that stealing is stealing and what they are doing is wrong, regardless of their good intentions. Opie asks Andy how it can be wrong if Willie can't help himself. Andy takes this opportunity to show the boys that Willie isn't quite as helpless as he claims to be. When Andy offers Willie a job and a place to stay, the hobo hightails it out of there, bad leg and all. It's now obvious that Willie is a freeloader, a lesson not lost on Opie and his friends. During the episode, Opie asks Andy and Aunt B if they are rich. At first, Andy says no, that you can't get rich on a sheriff's salary. Barney pipes in by saying that if you do, you are sure to be investigated. After Andy thinks for a minute, he dismisses their material wealth and remembers the other things. Andy tells Opie that their basic needs are being met, such as having a roof over their heads and plenty of food to eat. He mentions family and the fact that Andy, Opie, and Aunt B have each other. He also mentions that they are blessed with good friends like Barney. Andy begins to realize how much they do have to be thankful for and that, yes, they are indeed rich. This scene reminded me of an experience I had as a young boy. I remember one night when I was about 12 years old, my teammates and I had just finished playing a little league baseball game. We had won the game and one of the fathers had taken the whole team out for ice cream. Best I remember, wins for our team came few and far between, so we definitely had cause for celebration. However, what I remember most about that night occurred when one of the coaches brought me home. 
Our family had recently moved into the house my dad and grandfather built. It was a two-story house located just outside of the city on about 15 acres of land. As we approached the house, the coach took one look and said, oh, so here's where the rich people live. At the time, I really didn't pay attention to what he said, but the more I thought about it, the more it bothered me. Was I rich? I didn't think I was rich. Growing up in a single income family with four kids doesn't really give you the feeling of expendable wealth, but this guy obviously thought by the house we lived in that we must be rich. Of course, he didn't know that my dad and grandfather had done all the subcontracting and a lot of the work themselves. I'm sure my dad was able to build that house for about half of what it would have cost if we had tried to buy it from a builder. But I didn't understand all that back then. I was more concerned with the question of being rich and what that really meant. Upon further reflection, I decided that I must be rich. For starters, I had my own room. That was a definite improvement over our situation in the other house where my brother David and I had to share a room that was about half the size of a master bedroom closet in today's homes. Another thing that was, on, that was high on a 12-year-old's mind was food. We rarely ate out, but we always seemed to have enough to eat. So we obviously weren't poor. As far as clothes went, I really didn't notice that most of my clothes came from Hammers, a local discount store. In fact, some of my favorite shoes were hand-me-downs. We had two cars, so I guess you could count us as rich. One car was a late 70s station wagon that got about the same gas mileage as an armored personal carrier. And the other car was an, was an Aster, the Pontiac version of the Vega. For those of you who remember the Vega, you can guess how much luck I had getting dates when I began driving a few years later. But everything considered, I concluded that we were indeed rich. That feeling soon began to change. As I approached my teenage years, I began to rethink my assessment of our wealth. As my friends and I turned 16, several of them received cars of their own, nice cars, Firebirds, Sunbirds, and other hot models of the early 80s. I also had a Pontiac, but it didn't have Bird in the name. The Aster was a 1976 model complete with peeling paint and a leaking windshield. To make matters worse, I didn't have sole possession of the car. I shared it with my parents and my older sister. At that point in my life, I was a little more conscious of my clothes as well. Suddenly, the outfits from Hammers didn't seem so cool. But money was tight, and nice clothes were a little hard to come by. By this time, I was absolutely, positively sure that we were not rich. After college, things changed again. I was fortunate enough to find a good job. For the first time in my life, I had money. I was able to buy a car and eventually a house and then a bigger house. I bought nice clothes and I was able to eat out whenever I wanted. I had made it. I had arrived. I was rich. As the years go by, the material things mean less and less to me. I realize how easy it is to get caught up in the materialistic rat race our society promotes. Things that used to be very important to me no longer are. Furthermore, the things I didn't consider as important or didn't notice at the time are very important to me now. When I was 12 and was trying to determine if I was rich, I never considered the fact that I lived with both my parents. I never counted the fact that I had four grandparents who took, care, who took an active role in my life. I surely didn't count the fact that I had an older sister and two younger brothers around. However, when I look back on my childhood, those are the things I cherish. Those are the people who made me rich. It's easy to go through life and to think about the material things you don't have. And if you constantly focus on all the things you have yet to acquire, 
you will probably never consider yourself as being rich. However, if you stop and seriously consider the true blessings in your life, the things that you wouldn't take any amount of money in exchange for, you begin to realize how rich you really are. When Opie asked Andy if they were rich, his immediate reaction was no. For most of us, that would probably be our initial reaction as well. But as he began to reflect, Andy realized just how much they had to be thankful for. When I take the time to count my own blessings, I am amazed by how rich I really am. Thank you for joining me, and I will see you next time. Thank you.